Well, Razorback fans, we know the game between Arkansas and Oklahoma State is about to transpire. But I'm going to tell you why Arkansas wins this game right here on the Locked on Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Inside Arkansas Live, which you can catch every weekday starting at noon on Inside Arkansas and InsideArkansas.com. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Well, where's that? Everybody's having a wonderful Friday as you have finally made it. And uh, I know that some people... Uh, saw that like I missed out on a podcast on Wednesday because I'm going to be doing a pregame on Saturday uh, just a little podcast that uh, you get ready for the early game against Oklahoma State uh, have a little just a preview of that and, and breaking it all down and everything so it should be really good and really entertaining so be sure to check it out and listen to it and watch it but you know we're, we're basically here I mean it's over the point of no more hearing from coaches no more hearing from players just straight up all right what are we going to do what, what's this game going to be like how are we going to expect it what's what's going to happen and, you know, I always like to play the what if game and, and look at all different scenarios because I think it's just really smart and pretty much like every walk of life, honestly, is to look at, you know, the things ahead. And it could be decisions that you make and you you weigh the risk and rewards, you weigh the, the, the consequences from both. It's just, I think, a very interesting and also good way to prepare when it comes to some of the future emotions that you may have, and that's where it comes to raise your back football. I didn't do this against UAPB because I didn't really took it as a serious scenario, but here's the thing is like, I will be honest. I am going to predict Arkansas to win this game. Now I am not sitting here with a confidence level of 10 through the roof guarantee. I'm not sitting here saying that if Arkansas loses that I'll be floored and shocked, but I've always kind of taken the approach that I'm going to pick Arkansas to win certain games until they prove otherwise, until they prove that they like there's just something in the way or something that uh, really makes me feel like they can't win. And I think they can win this game. And, you know, we, we can look at a lot of different things and a lot of different reasons. And, you know, Oklahoma State fans, they all believe that they're going to win this game too, and that's fine. And then some even some of you Razorback fans that think Arkansas is not going to win. But the reason I believe Arkansas is going to win this game is because I believe that you have an offense that is going to be able to hold their own with many different teams because of the type of strengths that they have, but also the type of weapons that they have. You're, you're not one dimensional, you know, it's not to the point to where it feels like this offense is it'll go as this player goes. And if this player doesn't goes, it's over. I think that the talent that you have on this team really is, I'm not gonna say it's like high across the board, but, there's not really any bad position you are on offensively. Like, there's no position I look at like, oh, that's a weakness. You know, there's still parts of the offensive line we need to see more from, and we will this weekend. But tight end, wide receiver, halfback, quarterback, I don't look at any of those positions and be like, I don't know about that. So you have different ways of going about it and different ways of, of possibly beating the teams. And, of course, the Bobby Petrino factor. I just feel like also when you have those types of players – that are just solid and they're just good, solid, talented players. You're you're gonna cause some issues for this off for this defense of, of Oklahoma State. Because I'll be honest, I, the amount of people I've talked to, and I'm talking about people who are here in the state of Arkansas, but also people who even uh, are there in Oklahoma State and, and cover the program and everything. I don't think anybody's expecting Arkansas not to score points. No one's gonna. No one's looking at it and saying like, "Man, Arkansas, they'll be lucky if they." Get in this game, you know, are you surprised they you know, get scored more than 24 points? Like, no, it's nothing like that. Like, they feel like Arkansas is going to not only score points in this game, but also be effective and, and win. Or not win, but be a, be a successful offense. And honestly, most people think the same way they think, about, think about Oklahoma State. They think Oklahoma State's offense, because of Ollie and, and, and the job that he's done as, and as great of a running back that he is, he's just going to be a load, and it's going to be tough to stop him overall. And so it's almost like because of that fact, we talk so much about the offense, we're just assuming that either defense is going to either struggle or be optional or whatever. But I truly believe, in my hardest of hearts, 
that you have a couple of dudes on this offense that's going to be counted upon, like a Jaquin and Jackson, for instance. Like he, he's, you know, all know how how strong I feel about him and his success. Uh, you all know about how you know he, he's just a low. Like he's he's also just a load. He's just a good, talented, big back that can take a lot of hits, but can keep on going. He's tough. And if the offensive line can open up holes for him, I think he's going to have truly a lot of success and be able to be one of those bruising type running backs that really wear down this defense for Oklahoma State. The key is, of course, that everyone's going to be looking towards is Taylor Green as a quarterback. And I agree. Taylor Green can't afford to be inaccurate. He can't afford to throw picks. He can't afford to have what he had in, in some of the case, or at least like the opening play of the game, for instance, against UAPB. You know, if Arkansas had that play, that type of play set up and, and ready to roll and in the chamber in Oklahoma State to start the game, where it's like, hey, we know this is going to be a, a play that scores a touchdown here. Imagine if you had the perfect setup. The defense for Oklahoma State is in the defense that they plan on being. The routes are ran. The blocking's good. All of that is perfect. And you got your man for a big-time explosive touchdown from the get-go, from the jump. And Taylor Green misses it, shorts it, maybe even gets picked off. That is what will be the difference in this game as far as going from being a team that can compete and can be doing really well to Taylor Green. It's going to be a long day for him. You can't afford those types of mistakes. And we'll talk about clean, clean football here in a second. But those are the things that you're just going to have to hold on to. So this is where... I trust Bobby Petrino. I trust the offense. I trust the game plan that he's put together. But I also believe that he's going to have to have some sort of established, great running attack. Like It's it's cliche to say it. Everyone wants it. But I want this game to be pretty much predicated on the running game. If you are able to, if you're able to find some holes, if you're able to wear down a little bit of Oklahoma State's defense, if you find any sort of way like that, I want to see Jaquin and Jackson run it a bunch. I want to see Rashad DeBinion. I want to see Tyrell Reed. I want to see Braylon uh, Russell. I want to see all these guys go out there and just pound it and pound it and pound it if they can. And even Taylor Green get involved in the running game. And then pass it only when you have to. Because there's nothing more demoralizing than for an defense, especially to where they can't stop the run. And there's not a better way to be able to take a team as far as the atmosphere goes and everything than to establish a very successful running game on the road. I expect Stillwater, I'm going to be there, so it'll be funny to see how all that goes down, but I expect Stillwater to be pretty crazy. I expect the game to be pretty wild and the fans to be nuts. Like I fully expect it. Uh, but Arkansas and the, and the team in his general, they're going to have to hold that. They're gonna, they can't allow the start of the game to get away from them. They can't allow the the atmosphere or the uh, the jitters or whatever you want to call it to impact them in the beginning because they will get crushed. And it's so early in the season, so it's really hard to tell what this team is all about. But I just I just don't know if this team is going to be built to come from behind. Maybe they will be, but I don't want to find out because it's a little tougher to come from behind on the road than it is at home, and especially with momentum and energy and excitement. It's all going one direction. It makes it really tough. But the point is, is, I think Arkansas has all what they need. I think that they have the quarterback they need. I think they have the offensive line they need. I think they have the skill position guys that they need to be successful on offense. But it comes down to defense. It's again, it's like it's almost secondary. It's almost optional. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's, it's, it's whatever. Now the defense is going to have to do their thing too. But to me, it's not just simply about slowing down the 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 pass game or the running atta- running attack from. Oklahoma State. It's not as simple as that because I don't think that's going to be just possible just to do that and do that. Even though if Arkansas does slow down Ollie, it's I like their chances. But it's not going to be as simple as that. To me, it's always going to be about, in this particular case, the D-line. Passing and running. Can you slow down the run? But also, can you get pressure on the quarterback? There is nothing more, on the other side of it, demoralizing for a defense where the coverage is good and coverage is doing their job. You know, the linebackers, or or if they're drop back in coverage, you're doing their job or whatever. And say if you're sending four or five, six guys and you can't get to the quarterback, can't even make him feel any sort of pressure, that's a problem. 
And that's a problem that can't be done and can't be had. And they got every single player. I don't know if anybody knew this. I think it's been talked about all the time, but every single offensive lineman starter that Oklahoma State has, they're all six year seniors, experienced dudes. But will Arkansas be more physical? Will they have a better game plan? Will everything just be what it needs to be for Arkansas? I think so. Why not? Let's have fun with it. Be weird with it. Should be a great game nonetheless. We'll talk about the clean game. The clean game. And why that's important. More than ever. Here in just a second on the Locked on Razorbacks podcast. So stay with us. All right, all you Razorback fans. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. And that's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. Listen, LinkedIn isn't just a job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals that you can't find anywhere else. Even those who aren't actively searching for a new job but might want to be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users didn't visit any other job-leading sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. So on LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get qualified candidates within 24 hours. So hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and it may not have the time or the resources to hire. And LinkedIn is constantly finding ways to make the process easier. They even just launched a feature that helps you find and write job descriptions and it makes the process that much quicker. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. It's linkedin.com slash locked on college. Post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. Also want to tell you about our friends over at Home Field, the Home Field Apparel. We know that as Razorback fans, we all love the vintage Razorback gear, the logos, you know, the hog, the slobber hog, the hog running to, through the A, the hog leaning on the A. We like those old school logos, man, because they're really cool, and it gives us some sort of nostalgia about it. Well, sometimes that can be hard to find, especially in apparel, but with Home Field, they got it. They got so many different apparel items to choose from when it comes to Razorback vintage logos. And the way that the shirt fits, it's comfortable, it's cool. You can wear it to the Razorback football games, basketball games, all of that. And they have different styles, different colors for everybody to choose from. So as many as you, we all love the Razorback logo and the way it is now, but wouldn't it be a lot cooler if we had the old school vintage logo to be able to wear it out and make be unique and stand out in that way? Well, Homefield provides that. And if you go to homefield.com and you find that Razorback apparel, be sure to enter in promo code PIG24. Pig 24, P-I-G 24. Enter in that promo code when you get all the great Razorback items over there at homefield.com. It's homefieldapparel.com. All right, moving on into the next segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Now, this is probably people reading this and saying, this is the most cliche thing I've ever heard. Uh, hey, if you play a clean game, it's important. Yeah, it's, it's important to play a clean game. And you're right. You're right. It's it's a very cliche thing, but I'm going to be honest, like Arkansas and what I've seen so far this year, it was just one game and they were dominant and all that, but I don't think any of us are just sitting here thinking that this team is going to be out there and winning eight games. Like think, like, think about this. If Arkansas played a perfect game or at least their best game, their best game every single game this year, do you think it, it's like they're not going 12 and up? Now, you know, I'm not booking that. They're not that talented of a team. Because some, at the end of the day, talent has to outweigh it. There's going to be times where, who knows, Arkansas could play a great game, but their opponent is just better. Like, that happens in sports a lot. And so, the point is, is and, and also no one's going to play a perfect game. Arkansas is not going to play a perfect game. But the thing is, is that when you are going to go into your toughest games, your toughest matchups, your toughest opponents, and also being in the toughest environments, you cannot play a bad, dirty, nasty, ugly game and expect to win. You just can't. You can't turn the ball over at nauseum and expect to win. You can't have a bunch of dumb penalties and expect to win. You just can't do it because you're not good enough to overcome those just yet, especially on the road. I don't care what anybody says. Like Going on the road in any conference – and against any conference opponent, he's going to be difficult. And with the way that it's done, especially nowadays, it's it's like you have to be able to focus on the things that you can control. Like you're not going to get every call, and penalties are going to happen, but you can't allow your offense when 
you're sitting at third and three to get a false start because now you're 30 and eight or uh, a legal, well, I guess I forgot the terminology that that is, but basically a uh, <laughs> legal formation. There it is. Uh, when, when you're lining up incorrectly, like th- those small little p- penalties that are five yards end up making a, a huge difference. And so that's what I mean more about just not turning the ball over. Cause yeah, doy, of course. Yeah. Turning the ball over is bad, but it's about the, the way that you play the rest of it, not the self-inflicted wounds. I don't mind. Well, I shouldn't say I don't mind because I still mind. I hate losing, but I can at least live with Arkansas going to Oklahoma state and losing where they played a game that was well fought back and forth overall, like well performed. Just had a few, had a few plays here and there. Oklahoma state just played, you know, add one more drive. That was better. Like I can live with that type of ending to a game. I can, but what I can't live with is Arkansas losing this game by say like four points and then looking back on it and seeing the amount and seeing like, well, they had 13 penalties and 10 of them were, you know, pre-snap penalties or not like being first in goal from the six and having to settle for a field goal. That's what I mean about clean games. That's what I mean about controlling things. I don't care who you are, folks. I do not care what team you are. If you are ever in first and goal and you're within five yards of the end zone, you have to score a touchdown. Do not care. Do not care. You have to score a touchdown. That's the clean game I'm talking about. That's the clean type of approach that Arkansas has to have against this opponent, especially in Oklahoma State. They're really good. They're experienced. They're at home. They're fired up. They're going to do whatever it can they can to beat an SEC team because I know it's Arkansas. And so people say, well, it's still Arkansas. Yeah, you're right. But there is some sort of aura about beating an SEC team, especially now. And especially if you're Oklahoma State, you probably have a little bit of disdain towards the SEC. You have disdain towards Oklahoma and the fact that Oklahoma went over and joined the SEC and they don't play you anymore. Uh, You didn't get the invite. You you almost got your conference wrecked because of that fact. There's going to be some disdain, so you just can't have it that way. They're going to come out there and they're going to fight for blood and you got to be able to answer the bell. Play clean. Simple, right? Of course it is. We will talk about some of the SEC games going on this week in here in just a second. So stay with us here on the Locked on Ragermax podcast. All right, folks, before we uh, dive into the next topic, let's talk you. Let's talk about FanDuel because you've heard us talk a lot about it. It's America's number one sports book. Well, we have a little bit different going on right now. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then, with a YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out-of-market game. All you need to do is a Google get a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel anytime. And if that's not enough, FanDuel also has something special for all of our listeners this weekend. Be sure to check out FanDuel's Profit Boost in the app and use it for FanDuel's Double Your Winnings for all Sunday on September 8th, pregame Moneyline Bets. Profit Boost will start live Friday, September 6th, happens to be today so view your account page now and learn more how to get your boost just visit fandle.com to download america's number one sports book all right so final segment here on the locked on razorbacks podcast so you know i was looking at some of the sec games going on this weekend because let's be honest arkansas is one of the most important ones and it's honestly getting a lot of love, all things considered, comparatively speaking. There's a lot of pomp and circumstance about another SEC game, which I'll just be honest, it's gonna still going to be tough for me to call this an SEC game, but it is one. Uh, the other game that's going on the exact same time as Arkansas is Texas-Michigan. Texas going on the road to the big house. Tex- uh, Michigan struggled a little bit last week, like one, they're number 10 in the country, and Texas is number three, and people think that Texas might be one of the best teams in the country. Well, I guess you're going to find out. Texas is favored by seven and a half in this one. Like, I like Texas, and I, I don't think Michigan's that good, or at least as good as what they were. But I don't know. Just going to the big house, going on the road, there's always a little something. I don't really uh, – probably wouldn't touch it. But wouldn't it be funny if Michigan beat Texas, though? I would laugh. I would think that would be really funny. I don't like either team. I don't like Michigan. I don't like Texas. But I'd get a big chuckle out of it if uh, 
Texas ended up losing, and then their season felt like they'd ended there in the college playoffs of trying to get there. So that'd be pretty funny. But other games, too. I love this, too. Texas A&M and McNeese is at 11.45 in the morning. It's one of the first times I've ever seen one of those. Uh, 11.45 in the morning. Uh, so that one's not even a thing. No, neither Georgia and Tennessee Tech. Auburn and Cal, though. That one's on t- at 2.30 on ESPN2. It's interesting. Auburn barely beat Cal last year on the road in Berkeley. This one's in Auburn. And uh, Auburn's favored by 13 in this one. Eh. I don't know. Like I, I think Auburn's going to win. They should win, but... They're kind of like in the same position of Arkansas where people like Auburn fans have saw how great their offense was in that first game. They're like, oh, our offense is back. It's great. It's amazing. Well, I guess you're going to find out and see how it goes. Uh, Kentucky, South Carolina, that game is in Lexington. Give me Kentucky. South Carolina is trash, and I've felt that way for a while. So give me give me Kentucky in that one. Ole Miss, Middle Tennessee, doesn't matter. Alabama, South Florida, doesn't matter. Missouri, Buffalo, doesn't matter. Florida, Sanford, doesn't matter. Tennessee and NC State, how crazy is this? This is a top 25 game. That probably most people didn't even really realize that it was going to be one. Uh, but this is the Dukes Mayo's classic. It's over being played in Charlotte. Uh, Tennessee's favored by 10. And I like Tennessee in this one. Like Tennessee's going to score points, but you just never know, man. Like NC State, top 25 team, they at least worth a look. But we'll still have to wait and see. That, that one will be w- definitely worth the watch at 6 30. That'll be one I'm checking out. LSU Nichols, who cares? Vanderbilt and Alcorn State, who cares? Oklahoma and Houston. Eh, Oklahoma should win big. Houston's not any good, but you know we'll see. But then the, my favorite one's nine thirty. All right, this is this is Central Time, nine thirty p.m. at night, Central Time. You got Mississippi State and Arizona State. That game's being played in Tempe. Arizona State's favoring this one, but I don't know. Feeling pretty good about the Bulldogs. May have to go ahead and take them. Appreciate everybody listening in and watching into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at John Neighbor Show for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow morning. Have a great rest of your day, everybody. We'll see you then.